Hey guys, I'm Joanna if you've never been here before and today I am going to be talking about my wedding planning checklist. So in my last video I shared with you guys that I am engaged and Alex and I are planning a wedding in just a short six month period. So I have gone through and scoured all of the countless wedding checklist kind of blog posts and informationals and downloaded PDFs and I have tailored them to our specific wedding and to the things that we actually need to do. So I'm going to go through that list with you today, talk about, you know, the few things that we have done already and the things that we aren't focusing on that other people would probably include on their checklist. So this is going to be a long list. So let's just get right into it. So I have made myself a very pretty little color coded checklist that will live on my iPad and I will be able to go in, check it off. Uh, I was hoping that the color breakdown would make it a little less stressful. And ultimately it's not a super long list and I am pretty good at getting things done. So let's get right into it. I just want to add a little disclaimer that when I'm looking over this checklist, the month indicators that I've given to myself, which is how most websites and blog posts organized it was like what you should get done in the six month. I don't think that that's really accurate. I think you can get this stuff done at any point, but I've organized it in a way that I think the most important things and the most timely things are front loaded. And then as I get those things done, I'll just keep working through the list. And so in month five, I might be getting things done that I have currently organized as like the three month period. But if I'm getting through things faster on my checklist and I'd rather just get them checked off early, then wait to get them checked off later because I'd rather have more months to relax and not have much to do than a constant state of like, I have to get this done now. So the first thing to do, of course, is determine a budget. We have a relative budget that we are going to be working with. So that is already good to go. Number two, make a guest list. We already have a working guest list. We have tailored it and trimmed it down. So that's also done. Third, choose a venue, your formality and your theme. For our venue, we actually went with a restaurant that does host weddings and the restaurant has its own dress code. So that designated the level of formality. We're using the setting of the venue to help coordinate the theme. So all of that has gone hand in hand. That's why I created it as one single point and that is checked off. Hire a photographer. This was the next big thing for us because a photographer is very, very important, I think, long-term in how you remember your day and everything like that. It is also something that I found really varied in what, like how much money it could cost. We are hoping to wrap this up in, in the next week or so, so this is not something that we are checking off but it is the next thing on my list. The next vendor that we're focusing on is the musician. I've reached out to those and we are currently getting quotes back. So I feel good about where that's at, um, but it's also something that's pressing right now. The sixth thing on our checklist is to hire a videographer. Uh, we are not actually sure if we want to have video recording. Let us know in the comments down below if you guys really think wedding videos are necessary. So that's something TBD on our checklist. It's not something that we're really prioritizing, but because vendors have to be secured early, it is something that I'm putting at the top of our list. Next is hire a florist. We have a good idea of what florals will be needed for our venue. And luckily it's not that much beyond centerpieces. That's why it's at the end of the vendors that we're going to be securing, because I think that it is the most flexible. Um, we also probably won't be doing anything too crazy. So that also helps. Uh, we have a general idea of the floral design, but not necessarily the florist. So once we figure out our videographer and the musicians, we'll turn to florists. The next thing on the list is to buy a wedding dress. Now, normally I think this would come a little bit later in your wedding planning, but because we're on a shortened timeline, this was something higher priority. I actually have already gone and bought a dress. Um, I have the option to return it. So I will probably go shopping again just to see if there's anything else out there that I really love, but that is, technically done because if I don't find another dress, I've already got one. Next is to choose a color palette. And again, this is something that I think would typically come a little bit later, 
but hand in hand with that is to design our wedding invitations. And for me, it was really important that our wedding invitations incorporate the colors of our theme. So we have a pretty good idea of what that is going to be based on the flower combinations that we like, based on wedding invitations that we've looked at and kind of wedding photos that we like and what we were drawn to. So the color palette is done unless if we change our mind and designing the wedding invitations, I have actually pretty much wrapped up. So we're just going to be going to some stationary printing houses uh, in the next week and hoping to get those printed ASAP because with this six month time frame, we don't need save the dates, um, but we will probably send out invitations a little bit earlier since we didn't have a timeline to send out save the dates. So now we're in what I would consider the five month marker. And these are some more fun things that aren't quite hiring people, but are more uh, just like the general vibe of getting married, I guess. So the first one is to register for gifts. We have gotten a lot of, you know, requests from family members to let them know where we're registered and we haven't done that yet. So that is the first thing in month five that we are talking about. Then the next two are kind of questions for us, which is book your rehearsal dinner venue and book your bridal shower venue. So typically these are not things that you as the marrying couple have to handle, but it's something that, you know, there should be conversations about that going on during this time. So I've put it on my checklist so that way we know to have those conversations with people to know if those things are going to happen or not happen and to just kind of be aware of them and be involved to the extent you want to be involved and that we want to be involved. So those are on there. Next is for us hiring an officiant or picking an officiant. I felt that it was a little bit lower stakes than the other vendors because it's something that we might ultimately ask a friend to do. Also in month five, and this was more for what we have in mind is to book our honeymoon. We have a good idea of what we wanna do for our honeymoon. I'm not going to share that with you guys yet, uh, but I thought that it was best to get this done earlier so that way we then have the next few months to kind of plan the activities that we wanna do on our honeymoon. To us, we would really like to take our honeymoon right after getting married. I think that that's really romantic and you know, it's a luxury to be able to do that, but it's something that was kind of important to us and it will probably be the only major trip that we're taking this year. So it's something that we can look ahead to book and kind of put a little more effort into. Month four is to shop for tuxedos and suits. Also in month four is wedding cakes. So most people get a wedding cake made from a baker. So you'll notice that that wasn't one of the vendors that we had to pick. I feel really strongly that I want to make my own wedding cake. I am an avid baker. I have made countless cakes for birthdays, events, things like that. I have never made a tiered cake before though. So in this month four, I have included that I have to test bake my wedding cake. So I will be trying to probably tier a cake and testing out the two different flavors that I'm going to incorporate in that two tier cake. Next up is to buy our wedding bands. I wanted to put this a little bit earlier in the process because it's also something that is more expensive and it may take time to have them made. Then also in month four is to send out the bridal shower invitations. So if I'm having a bridal shower, it will likely be two, three months before the wedding. So giving yourself a shorter invitation turnaround time for our recipes for a bridal shower. I figured that would be within the four month period. Two to three months out now, I have on here to have my dress altered or and or to find a seamstress. And I'd r much rather bring a dress to a seamstress and have her tell me to come back in a month and have her know that she is going to be working on my item then, than wait until the last minute and be turned away and told like you should have come months ago. Also in the three to two month checklist is to do your test of your hair and makeup. I'm on the fence over whether or not I wanna have my makeup done. I think a lot of people look like someone totally different on their wedding day and I wanna avoid that. So I'm not sure that I wanna get my makeup done. I'm more interested in getting my hair done just because I think I wanna do an updo and updo stress me out when I've done them myself. I can do them myself, but they're stressful. And then in here I have purchased other decor. So any other kind of tablescape, 
decor that I want to have or, you know, cocktail hour decor, I want to start thinking about that, I think, two to three months out. I think those are things that you can have a little more fun with and they're not quite as timely. I don't want items for decor around for six months, um, so I'm not going to do them now. But you also want to give yourself enough time that you're not leaving it until the last minute and then you might not find any decor. So that will be in the three to two month range. Then we are down to the one month checklist. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that I have said you should do within the last month. The first thing is to finalize the menu. At our venue, you cannot finalize your menu until a month before. Hand in hand with the menu is to finalize the favors. We are thinking of doing something that is edible, so it's not something that we're going to buy, you know, three months in advance. Then we have writing our vows. We are not sure if we are going to be doing personal vows or if we want to stick to something very classic so that just because I'm not a big PDA person and I get very emotional very easily. So if we are writing our own vows, that will be a month out. I don't think it's something that we really have to do much sooner than that. Next is to finalize our floral design. Again, we have a pretty good idea of this and I think it will be something that we ultimately accomplish earlier, but I see a lot of people say that it's something to do at the end, just because seasonally the flowers may be different or the offerings that your florist may have may change. Also finalizing to do is the music list. Next is to create the ever challenging seating chart because you know you don't have RSVPs until about a month out uh, when you need to give your final head count we can't do a seating chart until then so that is within the one month marker and then hand in hand with that is to order our place cards for everyone's seating also because we won't know who is officially attending we will be putting together a photo shot list of everyone that we want photographed for our photographer so that is something that we will be organizing at the one month mark and for our last two things second to last will be to create a wedding timeline this is something i think you typically do with your wedding planner or wedding coordinator i would like to just get ahead of it we are not at the current moment in engaging with a wedding planner or separate wedding coordinator than our venue coordinator. And because of that, I think it's kind of up to us to set that plan. Uh, I am sure that the wedding venue coordinator will have a plan for us, but I would like to just kind of have something in mind so that way we can go into a conversation with our venue coordinator and have a general idea of what everything will be like. And then the last thing, and this is kind of unique to me, I know a lot of people have that you print your own vows for you to read, but I would also like to make a book of printed vows and speeches that people give. First, I have guests that I know struggle to hear well in these kinds of major events. So I thought it would be re really nice to have a printed book so that way they could read along to the speeches and to the vows. Um, and two, I thought this would be a really great memento for us to have after our wedding to be able to go back and read the speeches, read our own vows and kind of have, you know, a printed book that we could look back on. So those are everything in our checklist, but there are a few things that we didn't need and I'm just gonna run through them really quickly in case if any of you are creating a wedding checklist and you were like, why didn't she mention this? Booking a wedding planner, again, not something that we really wanted to budget for here. Hotel room blocks, we don't have a ton of guests traveling and our guests that are traveling, we will be touching base with them separately to ensure that they actually won't want a hotel. Save the dates because our wedding is less than six months away. We are not doing save the dates and we will just be sending our invitation suite a little bit earlier. Bridesmaids dresses, we I will not be shopping for bridesmaids dresses because I'm not requiring my uh, very intimate wedding party, which is just my sister and my cousin, to wear matching dresses, color coordinated dresses. They are welcome to buy whatever they want and whatever they love. So that is not on this. We are not doing a wedding tasting because our venue does not do that, which is not traditional obviously, but because of the restaurant that we are going with, we have already eaten there, we know their menu, um, and we have faith in what we are going with from their options. Um, given that that might change seasonally and we're not locking in the menu until the month of, but we won't be doing a formal tasting and a wedding website. A lot of people do wedding websites for privacy reasons. I just don't love them and they're 
I don't really like that. <laughs> I don't like a wedding website. I like all the information that you can get on them, but I tend to find that every wedding I've gone to, I look at the wedding website, but other people don't. Like, they just don't. So that is everything that we are doing for wedding planning right now six months out. If you guys have any suggestions of things that you think I left out, please, please, please leave it in the description box down below. If you have any wedding vendors that you loved in the New York area, in the New York City area, please also let me know. You can DM me on Instagram. Um, and yeah, we are really excited. This has been very stressful, particularly picking our vendors has been very, very stressful, but Honestly, from the rest of this list, it feels pretty good. And I don't think that there's too much more that we will be stressing about. I think there's a lot to do, but not that will be stressful. So yeah, I hope that you guys like this video. If you are also getting married and going through this process, please let me know in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. If there's any wedding content that you wanna see, make sure to let me know so I can prioritize that for you. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. And if you guys wanna watch one of my last videos, you can click on that here, or you can click on my face to subscribe.